differently as when I go to other places. Because uh, Robben Island has now become uh, a well-known pl uh, place, uh, locally and internationally. But I'm happy to go back, you know, to try and uh, remember the things uh, that uh, happened and the length of time we spent on Robben Island. To be frank, I can't believe that I spent 18 years in Robben Island. It looked like uh, uh, a very short time. Uh, and, uh, but uh, one is happy to have been associated with such a historic place. Other times during that 18 years that, that perhaps revisit you or you revisit them in your private moment, in your private space, when perhaps something that somebody said or perhaps the bravery that somebody showed from either side that just visits you and, and perhaps you sit there and you smile and you say, that was a moment in this 18-year period. Well, uh, you know, uh, Robben Island, although it was a painful place, it was also an area where we learned about the behavior of human beings. Because uh, the warders, almost all of them were Africaners. But there was a debate amongst them. Some said, uh, the responsibility for saving white supremacy now rests upon us as warders in Robben Island. We must treat these people in such a way that they will never think of coming back again. But others, still warders and Africaners, said, oh, no, we have to be very careful because in history, uh, the situation has changed. One who was at the top uh, is, uh, goes down, and the one who was down goes on top. Let us treat these people uh, properly, nicely, so that uh, if they take over, they should also give us the same treatment. You know, uh, some of us were not amazed, because uh, as public figures, as lawyers, as politicians, we had a lot of experiences where we found that uh, the thinking of people, including Afrikaners in authorities, was uh, not homogeneous. Tata, some people have asked you, and I think this is a question that you've experienced so many times, but allow me to ask it. How can you not be angry? It does, if you're a nation builder, it doesn't pay to be angry. If you are angry because you want to change your country from one which is uh, uh, reactionary to one that is progressive, you will know what attitude to adopt towards the men around you and uh, towards the country as a whole. No useful purpose is served by a nation builder, one who wants to be a nation builder by destroying or by being angry. You can be angry against ill-treatment, but what must dominate you is the idea of serving all South Africans and making your country part of the modern world. And being part of the modern world today, this country with 4664, with the President's Cup, which we saw just last week, and uh, the, the Million Dollar Golf Challenge, we are, we are achieving that. You are confident that we are moving in the right direction, we are doing the right things as a nation and as a people. No, we are doing that, but what always pains me <coughs> is to concentrate on those who are in the limelight and uh, forget about uh, people who are doing very good work, but uh, who have no uh, uh, status such as you have, for example. And uh, that is always painful to me, because uh, it was these men who started the struggle. Even during our time, many people were in the forefront uh, were not uh, people of status or educated and so on, but there were people who believed that all human beings without exception must enjoy uh, citizenship rights and must be treated as normal human beings. That on the 18th of July <coughs> celebrated birthday number 85, 
there's a big celebration and and the question is often asked are you going to slow down you continue building schools you're building clinics you're creating a, a viable south africa helping to create a society and an infrastructure that our children and our children's children will continue to enjoy and derive benefit from but are you going to slow down well almost everybody who is the nation builder wants her to be associated with a program which is going to uplift his uh, people and uh, it's something you know when you w wake up you are looking forward to doing something progressive and beneficial at your people especially in a country such as ours which is ravaged by poverty terminal diseases uh, lack of education you do want to, to contribute towards the solution of those problems so you feel from time to time that your work has not been done completely yet well it is not an individual's work as i've said before it's a collective action if you are thinking of yourself only you can't go you can never go very far but if you are thinking of linking up your own activities with those of others then uh, collective action is the sure way of uh, getting you uh, to achieve something to solve problems and to be able to mobilize uh, people we continue with our discussion with the former president and focusing on a completely different subject, the subject of music around the concert 4664, but we focus on his taste in music. Does he listen to the music of Peter Gabriel, Bono and the Edge? Is he a rock music fan? We'll be asking that question when we continue. Stay with us.